Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of kind of um, a creepy pasta thing I'm gonna be doing. Just a just a bunch of readings of things that I might find that are good. Um, I'm not gonna be doing stuff like Ben Drowned or um, Lost Over. I just I think reading them is a bit cliche because there's so many people who have done it already. So I found one called Link's Awakening, and I've uh, looked online, and I don't see anyone who's done it. So um, I'm hopefully going to be the first, and it's just going to be the first in a series that you're just going to keep going. I might have like a season one, season two, but generally, as long as people keep producing good stories, I'm going to keep reading them. If you guys have crappy stories you want me to read, then let me know. I'll read crappy stories. It'll be like Yuri of Wind's, um, you know, bullshit creepy pasta story time. And um, I'll probably like for this one, it's Link's Awakening, so I'll probably have some Link's Awakening footage in the background. So um, without further ado, let's uh, get into this. For me, the defining Zelda experience was Link's Awakening. It was the first Zelda title I had played, and the most challenging. It took me longer to clear than any other game. I was pretty young. That said, it's clear why this has bothered me so much. A few months ago, I was helping a friend of a friend move. After a few hours of heavy lifting, we took a break. I saw a box of old Game Boy game and my eyes lit up. I liked the new systems, but I still dig busting out that little 8-bit handheld. Or at least, I did. The guy we were helping saw me and asked if I felt like buying any. I picked out a couple and then I spotted it, Link's Awakening. I lost mine, the non-DX one, and was looking to replace it. He looked confused when I asked how much I wanted, how much he wanted for it, like he forgot he owned it. I paid him, pocketed the games, and went back to work. I should stress this, this there was nothing wrong with this cartridge. The label was fine, the cartridge wasn't cracked, nothing. I probably wouldn't have bought it otherwise. The game started off normally, there was nothing off about the music, color, or animation. I was stoked to play it again. Then I went to a star file. Something was wrong. First off, there was no music. There was only this barely audible thumping noise every other second. Next was the top right of the screen. The knight statues that had been replaced with two Stalfos, different from what I remembered. The thing that convinced me that it was a defect was that there was only one empty file. The other two were gone. At this point, the thumping noise was starting to, to annoy me. So I started the file and entered Link. That the game was faulty, but I was curious to see how. I started off with Link tossing and turning while Marin watches. There was no music, but the thumping noise was gone when I woke up. Marin says that the wait is over. She then said she'd make preparations and left the room. I tried to leave, only to be stopped at the door by a dialogue box that read dot dot dot, prompting me to speak to Taryn. His friendly tone was gone. He was pleading with me, offering my shield and asking to go. He begged, saying he'd tell me anything. Saying, well, saying he'd tell me where the sword was. <laughs> the usual sound effect for text was replaced by something duller and strangely paced. The wording and tone made it seem like, made it seem that Taryn was crying. He then insisted that I must be hungry, promising, promising to make me mushroom stew before rushing out of the room. It wasn't effective. It was hacked. Realizing that made the sequence with Taryn kind of interesting. I started exploring the village. The physical layout of everything was the same as I remembered, except for two things. All the human characters that lived outside of the village were now in it, except for the witch. Richard and the Quoco Keeper, Cuckoo, Coco, however you want to pronounce it, were standing near the Quoco statue. 
Crazy Tracy was at the center of the field of bushes. The second fisherman was beneath the first, and Mr. Wright was beside the library. The music was the same track used for the village in the original, but slower and a bit scratchy. Second, the crane game was gone. In its place was an area fenced off by lit torches. Inside was a large collection of bone piles, the same ones used in the, ca in the caves and dungeons. In, the same, in this area, there was no music, just a low pitch broken up by sharp, awkward breaks. Every villager laughed and said that I could be him because I couldn't that I couldn't be him because I had no sword. There was one the one exception one the only there the one exception was Yulrira. His sprite changed to show that his eyebrows were lowered angrily. The sword comment was an obvious hint, so I headed towards the beach. I made my way down the music fading to silence. Oddly, there were no monsters. I was more confused than bothered by it and went for the sword. The owl flew down when I got near it. He cackled and talked about how he was glad to fulfill his role. He ordered me to take the sword and go to the mysterious forest before flying off. I grabbed the sword, not that there were enemies to fight with it, and headed back towards the village slash forest. Near the village, the owl appeared again. Walking toward it, walking toward it caused him to scream about how you can't go, that they can't know, and that they don't deserve to. The game was forcing me into the forest, the layout of which had been changed. From the first screen, I could go only go right, where I found the witch's hut. The dull thumping noise started again. When I entered it, it became faster. Speaking with the witch made it louder and even faster. She insisted that there were no other ways to make it and offered power for a way out. The game shot out this brief high-pitched screeching noise. Syrup Sprite stopped moving and no further text could be prompted. I left the hut and headed right. And the next screen was more familiar. It was Terran in his raccoon form. The crying sound from earlier began looping, louder this time. He charged and began doing damage, crying as he did. The shield kept him off of me, letting me pull out pull up my inventory. The magic powder had been added. I threw some onto him, thinking it would cure him. His sprite movements became faster. The text appeared as he screamed about how his skin was burning. A new animation played, the game releasing another one of those high-pitched screeches. This one lasted for a whole animation, mixing different sound effects. Lines of darkness began to cover Terrence Sprite until he was covered. The arms fell off, his eyes disappearing as the ground was stained with his blood. The game was making sure I heard Terrence suffering. I was horrified. He hit the ground. A pile of blood and guts. The crying sound looped softly. The owl flew in and marked how excellent it was. I had done it almost to the letter. He screamed at me to put the thing out of his misery, and I had no idea what to do. A new dialogue box popped up, Taryn whimpering about the sword. I turned the game off. A few minutes later, I turned the game back on. Annoyed at the idea of the hacker getting one over on me, the file name had been turned from Link to Black. I was intimidated, but determined. It brought me to the point I had just left. The fact that I hadn't saved made me nervous. Everything was there except for Link's clothing. I couldn't tell if it was meant to be red or black, but the file name gave me a hint. I cut at the link, I cut at the Terran sprite. The panels above and below Terran became dark and the game made the horrible screeching noises. The owl flapped its wings and laughed, complimenting me. He ordered me deeper into the forest before saying, two down. Hearing that, I went to the previous screen, into Syrup's hut. 
There was crudely drawn blood everywhere. Syrup's head was on her table. The rat was hopping up and down beside it, feasting. I searched around and found nothing until I reached her cauldron. Text appeared. Still a few bones in here. What do you think the magic power was made of? I saw it as I, I saw it as a taunt and resolved to keep going. No enemies, no music. Screen after screen of forest with a soft, high-pitched screech in the background. Eventually, I had to go north traveling a few more screens before finding it. At the center of the screen was a black sword. To either side were two treasure chests. The right contained the fire wand, the left the ocarina. Taking the sword summoned the owl, who proceeded to teach me the lullaby of long slumber. It didn't sound like music, just hisses, hisses and scratches like a series of audio errors. He then asked me to try the wand. Trying trying to leave caused dot 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 afraid to pop up. I used the wand, trying to defy it. The screen flashed while uh, flashed white for a second, followed by every tree on fire. The owl giggled, flapping his wings and screaming about how they can be given no quarter. Everything in the forest was on fire, including some floor panels. Eventually, I was out, the high-pitched sound ringing the entire time with the sound of burning. I decided to talk to the villagers to see if there had been a change in their dialogue. I started, I started with Madame Meow Meow. The thumping noise started again as soon as I entered her screen. It was, a similar to, it was similar to the witch. Meow Meow was bleeding, and the audio for her text sounded like crying. She apologized, saying that they were just too hungry. The same screeching noise before her sprite stops. When I left her house, Bow Wow was gone. I went back inside to see what had happened. Meow Meow was in pieces, blood all over. Bow Wow was moving from piece to piece. Interacting with him brought up a box that talked about how happy he seemed, how hungry. Leaving the house, I saw the owl again. He was eager. He was to keep going. He told me to play the lullaby. It would speed things along. The prospect bothered me, but getting through this insult to my childhood faster sounded good. Playing the lullaby led me to a room like the ones you found at the end of each dungeon. There was a treasure chest and two full heart pieces. A plaque on the wall read that for every one you carry out, you'd receive a new treasure. I took the items, at first was the rock's feather, and left through an exit at the rear of the room, which brought me back to Marin's house. Trees blocked off the plains and the beach, the forest by fire. The select glitch brought me into a black screen that forced a reset. There was no way out of the village. It was a weird, cruel cycle. I approached a villager. They said nothing. The horrible screeching noise sounded, and I came back to see something horrific and disturbing. I'll post their dialogues and how I found them here. Crazy Tracy, before you do it, tell me I'm pretty. A bloody pile with skin to the right. Richard. You silence only a symptom. I was merely the first. His hands and tongue formed a triangle around him. He was in a pool of blood. Yulrira. You actually let me think I'd go to old age? How unkind. He was lying sideways the telephone. He was lying sideways with the telephone where his head would have been. The blood, scattered, the blood scattered all over the floor and made it look like his head had been smashed apart with the phone. Yulrira's wife. I won't hide. Won't give you the pleasure. I never saw her. But when I tried to interact with one of the cabinets, it read, She's finished bleeding out. Leave her in there. The Cuoco Keeper. Ha! I'll find a way out. Impaled on Cuoco's statue. The Fisherman. The funniest part? I don't regret it. Me either. 
Their fishing poles are in the pond. If you interact with them, it reads, no more bubbles. You'd reel them up, but it would just tear off. Popple, wife and child. Anything. Name it. It's yours. I can get it. I can get anything. Mercy. The one thing I couldn't... The one thing I couldn't get my hands on? Why? Found them hung by what appears to be hookshot chains. Shopkeeper. Everything I've got, here and back home. Information, powders, and weapons. Just let me sail away and you'll never hear from me again. Found him in pieces with arrows in his torso. The fact that bombs and bows are missing from his stock suggests that that's what was used. Mr. Wright. I never stopped, you know. Here's the key. You'll need a magnifying lens. He was sitting at his desk, black pixels around his mouth, and his hands were cut off. I didn't catch on to what the black pixels were about until later. When I killed the last victim, the owl appeared. He thanked me for helping him fulfill his role. He said I'd find Marin in the front of the library. I found Marin, who said I w it was almost time to go. She gave me the magnifying lens and told me to take my time. Inside there were more books about more books out than the original. With one book with one blank book stand near the entrance. Each was a profile organized by crime and sentence. From top top left to bottom right. Richard staged a coup against the Hyrule royal family. He was left to bleed to death publicly after having his hands cut off and his tongue removed as punishment. Ilrira was a former advisor, betrayed the throne as Richard's informant. His skull was caved in with a medium that represented communication. Ilrira's wife hid war criminals and rebels in support of her husband and Richard. She was given a small but mortal wound and bound before him before being left to die in a small confined space similar to those she used to hide others. Mr. Wright wrote slander during the coup. His hands were cut off to rob him of his favorite pastime before being force fed enough ink to burst his stomach. Popple and his family were thieves. They were hung facing one another so that the last thing they could steal was the look of their suffering loved ones. Crazy Tracy was a man who skinned women and wore their flesh. He would wear the face as a mask and hide within what they looked like a seat, the body stuffed into appear as though it was sitting. This is why the body seemed so much smaller, skinned alive. Syrup kidnapped and sacrificed a child to the black arts. She was forced to watch the bones from her arms and legs be used in making magic powder before being beheaded. The Kuoko Keeper was a felon who escaped every prison in Hyrule, imp impaled on a statue that represented freedom. The fishermen with pedophiles drowned with their genitals attached to fishing hooks. Madame Meow Meow killed her children and fed them to her pets, diced into pieces and served to animals. The shopkeeper was a powerful criminal drugs and arms dealer, killed with his wares magic power magic powder forced down his throat. Taran was a serial rapist. He was transformed into a literal beast and then executed. At this point I felt sick. The low thumping in place of music wasn't helping. It grew slower and duller, as if the sound, was dr the sound were drudging along. I spoke with Marin and she explained the rest. Colon is a prison island. The worst of Hyrule's criminals are sent there before receiving their death sentence from the judge, the Owl. He had been waiting for an executioner, someone to carry out his will. I was sent by Hyrule to enact the wishes of the throne, leaving their carcasses as a warning to the next group. Marin was innocent. She had been wrongfully sentenced for a gruesome crime she had no part of. She accepted that she would be killed by the executioner but refused to give Hyrule the satisfaction of fearing it. Nor would she let her name be passed around in horror stories. She saved me so that you could she saved me so that you could tell them that they had failed to break her. She asked if I was ready to end it. I was given the option of 
yes or no. But choosing no just let me explore the village again. When I said yes, the screen faded to white. It came back to an animation of Link, or Black, sailing away. He looked satisfied, happy even. It, it then cut to a drawing of the library. Marin was lying propped up against it with her eyes rolled back. Her throat and stomach had been cut open with a huge slash across her face. A lot of care was given to the blood and guts. It was disturbing, and the peach picture had stuck with me long after I turned the game off. Bold font appeared in front in front of her reading, congratulations. Beneath it, in smaller black print, was You're the Hero of Hyrule. It faded to black before white text appears at the center of the screen, and no one will even know you volunteered for it. Okay, well, that was Link's Awakening. Um, forgive the mess ups first time. Um, obviously, as I, time goes by, I will get better with reading these things. But um, this was kind of like a test just to see if people enjoyed it. Um, so I hope you guys did because I certainly really love the story. Um, so, yeah, that will be the end of that. Um, if you guys have a story you want to hear me read, then kind of comment uh, what story it is or leave me a link for it or something like that and um, I'll read it. Um, until then, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and um, follow me on Twitter. Support, consider supporting me on Patreon. And um, yeah, I will be back with another story. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul. See